untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Time for some more Forgotten Realms drafts today and I'm gonna try something a little special. Um, I think yesterday the untapped team came out with a, a new overlay called Draftsmith and uh, I've got access to that uh, plugin basically for the untapped deck tracker and uh, it's supposed to be a helpful tool during draft so we're gonna put it to the test today and see what we think about it, if it's any good, if uh, it might be worth using for people in the chat and I believe you can get a free trial for the the special overlay, the regular overlay is always free to use and make sure to use the link that's below the stream to download it which will help out the channel but uh, the Draftsmith plugin I think uh, is a premium feature but you do get a trial period where you can try it out for yourself. Either way let's jump into a draft and we'll uh, figure out if it's worth our uh, time to use it. Alrighty, so pack one, pick one. It's loading the Draftsmith ratings. So Draftsmith would recommend either Black Dragon or Owlbear. Yeah, I can get behind those two picks. Paladin close third. So we can see all those uh, colored numbers below each card. And so the Draftsmith will dynamically adjust its ratings based on what you've already picked and on your mana curve, etc. Pack one, pick one. Black Dragon's cool. Black Rat's probably the best color pair. Yeah, I think I like the Black Dragon here, but it's close. Paladin, Owlbear, both excellent first picks too here. But I want to cast some dragons. All right, second pick. I'm guessing we're gonna go with Paladin here, but let's see what the Draftsmith thinks about it. So, yep, recommends Forsworn Paladin with a uh, Red Dragon as kind of a second option. Yeah, pretty straightforward Paladin. Don't need a Draftsmith to figure this one out. Evolving Wilds could be a nice wheel, but we'll stick to black for now. I guess we get to see the color win percentages on the side too here. So yeah, black red by far the most winningest uh, color pair. Well, next up, I like both of the red uncommons. In black, there's dispute, which is good in black red specifically. There's an owl bear too. If we want to go black green, but I guess the reason why it recommends the red cards is just because black red is the better color pair of the two. Um, yeah, I like Channeler, good card advantage engine. I've been pretty happy with Morningstar too, nothing wrong with the card. Um, if we're la maybe lacking two drops, I would take the Morningstar over the Channeler, but it's still early in the draft, so we'll go with the Channeler. Even though double red can be kind of tricky on the mana if we don't get any fixing like Evolving Wilds. Okay, here, it's unclear what to take, pack's kind of weak. Manticore, not really a, re a very high tier common as it turned out. Could speculate on a different color here, so I don't hate speculating on a Charmed Sleep in case we end up maybe blue-black. So I think I'll take that over Manticore. Even in black red, Cellsword is kind of a mediocre filler, so yeah. We'll take a Charmed Sleep for now. Okay, that's a pretty late price of loyalty, so yeah, I guess I'll take it here. Also a fan of Hoarding Ogre, which I guess is what's being recommended here. But yeah, we can see price of loyalty getting a pretty high rating, just because we're potentially black red, which is where that card is at its best. Also very late stat fast Paladin. Almost first picked it, so it's also kind of late here. I guess the Mind Sorcerer, if we want to end up in blue, is a reasonable pick too. 
Yeah, black does seem to have dried up a little bit. We did first pick two black cards. Like, a Hexblade I'll still be pretty happy with. So, yeah, we have to keep that in mind too. It's possible we don't end up black, or we have to kind of get our black in pack two, as opposed to pack one and pack three. So, now we're seeing a pretty late Troubadour in green. So, yeah. The draft's a bit all over the place. I mean, there's no black or red card I really want. So I guess we'll take a Troubadour. And I guess that's pretty close with a Soul Sword according to the Draftsmith, so... Alrighty. Alright, now there's some decent black and reds between Skeletons and Singer. In blue there's still a Spy. And then there's a Playable Ranger in green too. Don't think I'm going to give up on Black Red just yet, so I think I'm preferring the Singer over the Skeletons. Alright, that's a late Sepulchre Ghoul, so great pickup for the Black Red Steel and Sacrifice deck, and the Draftsmith agrees. Don't think I'm playing any of these, so they should all be pretty low grades. Check for traps. Could see maybe sneaking into the deck. Veteran's really just a red-white card, not a card that's going to shine in black-red. Okay, don't mind Hexblade, don't mind Goblins, and there's an Evolving Wilds too. So, a lot of options. Um, goblins is especially nice if we end up with some sort of equipment. So we have many creatures to put those equipment onto. I think Evolving Wilds is probably the safest pick, because I'm going to play no matter what. And we should be able to get more Hex Blades later. I think Beholder is better than Elemental, but unlikely that I'm going to play either. Sure, I'll take an Eyes of the Beholder, but again, probably not going to play it. And I'll take a Hex Blade. That one might make the cut if we end up with a few treasure makers. Alright. So, first pack points towards black red, so let's see if that trend continues. So, here we see another Sepulchre Ghoul in black, and then two decent red cards between Pair of Goblins and Improvised Weaponry. I think I'm leaning towards taking the Weaponry. Partly because I want to be taking red cards in pack 2. Since at the end of the day, after pack 1, we did end up with quite a bit of black, but the reds kind of dried up. So, just want to make sure we end up with enough uh, playable red cards to fill out our deck. And I've been pretty happy with a couple weaponries at 3, ramp into your 5 mana plays. And even though Black Red doesn't have a lot of actual 5 drops, if you want to combine your um, Price of Loyalty with a 2 mana instant that sacrifices a creature, the Deadly Dispute, you do need 5 mana, so the treasure still comes in handy there. Yeah, Volo is a sweet one, but we're pretty far from casting it, sadly. But a Dragon's Fire's excellence, so it's a pretty easy pick up here. Hope to wheel maybe an Evolving Wilds, Hexblade, who knows. Okay, easy Grim Bounty. Should be shining pretty bright here. Ooh, Sphere of Annihilation. Is it better than Dragon's Fire? Probably not. There's also Red Dragon. Yeah, I think it's probably still Dragon's Fire. Don't have a ton of removal so far. Do have a Black Dragon to power up the Dragon's Fire too. I mean, I would have played a Red Dragon if I got it, but I think I prefer the Dragon's Fire still. The Bugbear is also decent, and yeah, I think I agree that all are better than the Sphere of Annihilation here. Another Grim Bounty. Alright, we're definitely getting paid off here in Black Red. 
double dragon spawn or double grim bounty or removal at some point. So hopefully we pick up some more threats to close out the game with. Don't think I'm going to play Precipitous Drop, but there's nothing else for us here. And as we'll see once we complete the draft, the Draftsmith plugin also recommends the ideal deck with the cards we've drafted. Ooh, Death Priest is a gift here. Definitely like that with double Grim Bounty and double Dragon's Fire to potentially enable it. Can often end up with a few skeletons, vampires, and zombies to give plus one plus one. Although swarming goblins would also be fine here. So yeah, we're clearly black red. Fireball seems good too. I mean, it's not like we need more removal, but still seems better than a hexblade. I'm hoping that Sepulcher Ghoul from the early pack wheels. And we can pick up an extra Price of Loyalty. Haven't picked up any Deadly Disputes yet. Alright, I might actually go for Zombie Ogre over Temple. Just because I'm kind of creature light at the moment. And when we have a lot of removal, we can enable the Zombie Ogre multiple times. But a Temple would definitely make the deck as a dual land. Even have a Black Dragon to... Let it come into play untapped. Alright, I'll take a hex blade now. Don't need a second check for traps. Although I'm not sure if I'm playing two hex blades. Nothing here. All right, maybe I'll play Herald as another Curve Topper slash Mana Sink. Alrighty, time for pack number three, and we're pretty close to having a playable deck after two packs, which is promising. So we could pick a price. We have dub. Wait, we didn't wield the Sepulchre Ghoul, so I guess we are pretty light on Sacrifice Outlets, which is also why the Draftsmith isn't. Um, prioritizing Price of Loyalty. I think I still take it and then just hope to grab another ghoul or two, maybe a deadly dispute, and uh, pass on the Fang Blade. But uh, I can easily see why it recommends the Fang Blade here. Okay, what do we have here? There's a rare, that's on color. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily give it a 40 rating here, but we do have a lot of removal to clear a path for it. So it is just a high power attacker that can close out the game in a few attacks. So it's probably still the pick. But um, Valor Singer, Temple are both fine too. Fates Reversal could be good, but we currently don't have a lot of creatures that we want to get back with it. So I'll take the Giant. Okay, Shambling Gas is great if we can pick up a Deadly Dispute. So we'll take that. I mean, even without Deadly Dispute, it's just an early blocker. That's pretty annoying to get past. Red Dragon's excellence. I'm a bit light on two drops, so a Horde Robber would also be decent in this deck, but... Oh yeah, easy Sepulchre Ghoul now with double price. Vampire spawns also playable. There's a horde dropper I was talking about. But uh yeah, with double price of loyalty, gotta take the ghoul. And there's my deadly dispute as well as Sepulchre Ghoul. This one's tough. I think I still prefer the first dispute over the third ghoul, even though I'm a bit light on two mana creatures. So yeah, I'll take the dispute. Good with Shambling Ghast, good with Forsworn Paladin as well. And there's another ghoul as well as a Swarming Goblins. The Draftsmith still recommends Swarming Goblins. Let's take a look at our curve. Yeah, like the Herald I could easily replace with the Swarming Goblins. 
This one's close. I think I'm still leaning Ghoul, since I do have a few 5-mana creatures I can play. We don't have much in terms of equipment where those 1-1 one -one Goblins are gonna come in handy. Don't mind Evolving Wilds here. And Draftsmith agrees. And yeah, in a second we'll get to find out how Draftsmith will build our deck for us. Maybe I should kind of build it preemptively to see how far off we are. Didn't think I'm going to need any of these six drops. This pick doesn't really matter. Probably don't need check for traps. Didn't think I need precipitous drop. A bit light on three drops. Probably want Valor Singer over Temple, even though Temple with double dragons kind of nice. But already have double evolving wilds. So Herald can go. Not hating the zombie ogre in this deck. So this is more or less where I'm at. I have to make one more cut. But we'll see how close we are to the Draftsmith optimal build. Yeah, one thing Draftsmith doesn't do is come up with a clever deck name, so. We still have some input there. Alright, Vampire Spawn might actually make the deck, since we're lined on three drops. So I would have to make two cuts from this current configuration. So now that the draft is over, Draftsmith will load up our recommended decks. Alright, so it gives us a couple options. Black Reds, Grixis, where it tries to play Trickster and Charmed Sleep. Yeah, we can all agree that's probably not the best choice. And Sultai, where it tries to fit in the Troubadour. And then at the top it gives you kind of a rating for each deck. So we'll pick the Black Red one. So Draftsmith recommends to add Precipitous Drop, cut Vampire Spawn, cut Zombie Ogre and cut a Hexblade. I think we've got enough removal where I don't need Precipitous Drop. I can't see cutting one hard hex blade since we still need to make two cuts. So that one can probably go. And then still need to make one cut. In terms of mana base, yeah, favoring black seems fine. And then, yeah, what's our last cut? I don't hate to spawn just to have a, an extra 3 mana play, because Price of Loyalty is seldom going to be a 3 mana play, unless I guess we have turn 2 Ghoul and the opponent plays a powerful creature we need to take out. Zombie Ogre isn't at its best in this deck, since of course we're not venturing outside of Zombie Ogre. So I could see cutting it. Sure, and then keep the Vampire spawn. So we're one card off the recommended Draftsmith deck, which is pretty impressive, all things considered. And uh, yeah, 8-7. I'm gonna swap around my basic lands. I like how it recommends adding lands now. And it like dynamically changes the overlay, that's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, so first trial run with Draftsmith, I've got to say. It looking pretty good. Now it doesn't choose our deck sleeve for us, and it doesn't choose our deck name. So we still have some creative freedom there. All right, chat, what should we name this deck? Red Eyes Black Dragon, all right, that works. Alright, no black mana. We do have double Valor Singer, so any third land gives me two plays. Do need double black for Grim Bounty though, so it's gonna be a little rough. On the play this was, would probably be a mulligan. On the draw, I'm definitely thinking about it. Yeah, I mean we do have more black than red in the deck to draw towards too. 
think I'm keeping this. down. Spawn before Valor Singer so we can get immediate value from the Valor Singer trigger without giving away any info. Interesting attack. So what could this represent? Well, there's not that many pump spells in white. Could be another pair of goblins, I suppose. Could be... Yeah, could be that white's weird combo trick that gives something lifelink and something first strike. Which I'm honestly fine trading for here. Or could just be two damage make a treasure. I think in all those cases I'm fine blocking. That's fine. Our hands not bad. Could get even better with the price. And if our opponent's ramping into something big, we've got a Grim Bounty available. Alrighty, so if I play Sepulchre Ghoul and Shambling Ghast pre-combots, I can potentially sag the Shambling Ghast to shrink down the Goblin if they try to double block. So is that the play I'm going with? I could just not attack this turn, play double Sepulchre Ghoul, or play Singer and Ghast. Because I'm kind of wasting the plus two plus two from Sepulchre Ghoul if I sag the Ghasts in my turn. So I think I prefer doing something else, so it's probably just double Ghoul. And then no attack. All right, there's a red dragon, perfect target for Grim Bounty. Yeah, I think I still take out the dragon here, and then I can use the treasure to play Shambling Ghasts and set up some good attacks. I could even kill the 1 1 Goblin before attacking, just so my opponent doesn't have the option of blocking a ghoul with it and preventing a bunch of damage. I think that's fine. There's a small part of me that wanted to play the channeler first, just so I could get the card advantage going before killing all the opponent stuff. But I think we've got enough board presence where I can just do this. And then I'll pump. I guess Singer itself is fine. Point's probably just going to trade for the 2 1 ghoul, which I'll allow. Alright, fair enough. Priest is a good one. The giant duke could be pretty great too. So I guess I'm okay trading one sepulchre ghoul here. I don't have anything I actively want to sacrifice to save the ghoul necessarily that I want to play pre-combat. 
So I think trading one ghoul to clear a path for Gale's channeler is fine. So I'm just gonna attack with one ghoul here, I guess. Alright, double blocks. Sure, I'll kill the Barbarian. I guess if my opponent has Teleportation Circle, I would have preferred killing the Priest. Okay. But now Chaos Channeler trades for both if they stay back. Always want to attack with Channeler before playing land for the turn, in case we exile a land with it. And then I'm probably just going to play the Giant Duke here, instead of Valor Singer. Could have also tanked with the Ghoul, because I'm likely getting double blocked here. But there's a chance my opponent would just block my uh, Ghoul with the Pegasus, and that's kind of awkward. So sadly the Black Dragon goes to waste, but got a free land and a John Duke. Alright, that's gonna make it difficult to race. Now we still have essentially five removal spells, I think, that kill the dragon between the two prices, another Grim Bounty and two Dragon's Fire. So it's not like we don't have any outs. That one doesn't quite do it. Was one damage off if I sank the Valor Singer and went face, but we can probably close out the game next turn. Opponent stays back. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. Okay, we're on the play with a nice hand. No sack outlet to go with the price, but a turn one paladin can do a lot of work. Turn two, probably make a treasure. Ooh, can ramp into a turn three channeler. Now, an early channeler does have the potential of exiling expensive cards that we cannot cast. With Hollow Removal, I'm not too worried about Rogue Class. Displacer Beast, perfect target for weaponry. I'll have to take that out now if we want to attack with a channeler. Let's see if we can hit a land. Oof, that's rough. Well, at least we got rid of two non lands, so we're closer to drawing one naturally. A ghoul to combo with Price of Loyalty. So, probably just Dragon's Fire, the Ginny, hope to hit our land drop. I'll keep a Swamp untapped, and then any land lets me play Ghoul to set up Price next turn. Alright, there's our lands. Opponent's already at 9 here. Yeah, Rakdos has some great removal in this set, that common. Giant, okay. So that's Ward 3. So if I draw lands, we can pay for it. And pay for it we will. Uh, 
All right, we're on the play, and this. All right. I have to decide if I want to play turn one Ghast or if I want to curve out Ghoul and Vampire spawn. Do we think we're going to draw another untapped land? Hmm. Yeah, I'll go with the Ghast. Alright, we drew the mountain, so get to curve out beautifully. So price off the top would be great if the ghoul survives. Any additional removal spells would be good. Put on green-white, so presumably a life gain synergy deck. Fiddlebender, okay. Alright, can stop drawing the lands now. So if I were to attack, I could attack with both. They probably block the ghoul. I think I play spawn. And then if they block ghoul, I think I'm willing to sag the spawn for it. And if they block gas, of course, we can just give minus one, minus one. Alright, that's fine. Don't really need the treasure to ramp into anything. And that's fine. Ooh, nice. Can't play the Death Priest this turn, but we will be able to. And this is a zombie, so gets plus one plus one. And this is a vampire, which also gets plus one plus one. So, part of me wants to keep the dragon's fire until after we play the death priest, so I can get an extra skeleton out of the deal. But we might have to just kill a creature end of turn, untap, play death priest, smash for six. All right, that one is a bit too big. So we still have a game. Now I can still attack with a ghoul. Which would then sag the spawn, which also triggers the death priest. Or we can just fireball. I think I still prefer Death Priest's attack with Ghoul. Probably shouldn't have played my lands to not show that we can make a token end of turn, but that's alright. Opponent takes it, so I could deal 5 and then I get to make a skeleton, which is almost... Yeah, that might actually be better than just keeping the vampire spawn. It's not like a 2-3 does much if they answer the death priest. So... I think that's fine. Could have also sent the vampire spawn, I guess, would have bounced off the dungeoneer. Yeah, the vampire spawn could have attacked. Although I think it would have ended up the same, assuming they blocked uh, the vampire spawn here. Serpone's at 7, fireball can put him to 5. And they need to answer the death priest, it's not like green white has a ton of great removal spells, so it's just going to be the spiked pit trap. opponent doesn't get a, a treasure even if they rolled high. Alright, so... We we're one damage off if we sack the skeleton. Double dragon's fire in hand, so... Proponent goes forest into the herd gorger. 
the hill giants, we could be in trouble. Otherwise, we should be okay. Iron Golem is not going to do it here. We're on the draw with a fine hand, I think. Could use more creatures. And there's a creature. Fetch a swamp right away. Pixie guide. I might end up killing with a dragon's fire, but we'll wait and see. Take the one damage first. It doesn't really stop our Chaos Channeler from connecting. I think, let's see. I mean, we've got a couple options here. Can Dragon's Fire the Rust Monster, untap, play Valor Singer, which attacks past Pixie Guide. I could do nothing, untap Weaponry the Rust Monster. There's not always going to be great targets for weaponry, whereas Dragon's Fire usually finds something. Although blue-red is also kind of on the low toughness end of things. So I think we'll find another target for weaponry, and I just want to play the Singer next turn. Get in for three. Opponent could be holding their own removal spell or a counter spell here. I think I still give him the channeler. And then next turn I can maybe double spell. Alright, it's just a contact other plane to draw a few cards. That's fine. So hopefully they present a target for improvised weaponry, which can also ramp me into the Black Dragon. Alright, Frost Giants is a real roadblock here. Now I can still pump up my channel with a Singer and get an attack in, so that's nice. And uh, yeah, see what we hit with Channeler before doing anything else. Seeing the value of Valor Singer too. Okay. So I will be able to Price of Loyalty the Pixie Guide and sack it to the Ghoul. So that's neat. Ooh, a red dragon. Yeah, I think I'm okay just running into it and finishing it off with weaponry. So I pumped the ghoul with the Valor Singer. Attack with both. And then if they block Ghoul, I'm just gonna let damage happen weaponry. If they block Valor Singer, we'll do the same. Now we are starting to flood a little bit. So if they can answer the Black Dragon, we could be in trouble.
yeah, in hindsight, the Dragon's Fire could have dealt 4 damage with Black Dragon, which could have finished off the Red Dragon. But then we also wouldn't have had the Valor Singer in play, so the game would have looked a lot different. And this is perfect. We get to take out Chaos Channeler, attack into the Pixie Guide. Opponent does still have three cards in hand. They've cast their contact other plane, so they've seen a few more cards than us. Although, then again, we got to attack with our Chaos Channeler, and the opponent didn't. Swarming Goblins. So, okay. So I can pump up my Black Dragon, hit for 5. I think I'll need to Grim Bounty the Swarming Goblins, otherwise I'm going to be taking too much damage on the ground. But I can do that second main. Ooh, Grasselax. That's a good combo with all those tokens. Although just a pixie guide gonna swing in for one. Captain. And a Shambling Gas. Shambling Gas is not bad here. Well, I think we're just swinging for five and then... We'll see what happens. If we top deck Fireball, we can burn them out. A Red Dragon will do it too. Right, Pixie Guide is attacking, so they're hoping to draw something, or they have something to answer the Black Dragon. And then here, probably block like so. And then I can finish off Captain with the Ghast. If I block Captain, then I only get to take out one thing. I think I can afford three damage. And if they want to bounce the goblins, of course, it's not going to do much with Grasselax. Well, we are kind of all in on this Black Dragon. Hoarding Ogre is fine. Okay. Well, move to combat, see what happens. Who do I pump with Valor Singer? Probably just Valor Singer itself and send both, which I'm fine trading for either one of the opponent's creatures. And even if they minus two minus so the black dragon, it's still lethal. We could have a bounce spell here. Alright, taps my dragon instead. Fair enough. Now do I still attack? I'm forcing a trade. If they don't have anything, I think that's better than just hanging back and letting the opponent draw more with Grasselax, although they're probably gonna get to draw either way. Uh, trades Grasselax, keeps Ogre. And then, did we scry to the bottom? We didn't. So we'll thin out the deck then. Trickster, uh oh. So that's why they kept Ogre. Yep, yeah, now they get to make chum blocking tokens, they get to draw. The dice rolling synergy is going off. So we're probably gonna have to top deck one of our burn spells Red Dragon, Fireball. Maybe a removal spell for a flyer can do it, but we'll see. 
The opponent keeps back Pixie Guide. So yeah, now the blue-red deck is really going off. Ah, we don't have money outs. We do have a second price of loyalty, that will do it too. So I think we have about three outs between our two burn spells and our price. Swamp is not an out. And now we're certainly dead on the way back. Well, we drew a few too many lands near the end. Not much we could do about that. Okay, pretty nice hands. Cast into Ghoul. Backup Ghoul and a price of loyalty. Gas can potentially make treasure if needed. I guess there's an argument for not showing the red mana yet. But at this point, most people know that uh, a ghoul means black red. Another price. I think I wait on stealing the Battlecry Goblin for one turn here. Because I wouldn't be able to enable pack tactics if I steal it now. So either Valor Singer or Vampire Spawn. We'll go with the Valor Singer, then Gas gets to attack. Alright, and Dragon's Fire. Okay. And then... Probably want to play my Ghoul before pricing. They can pump this on defense, so they could trade for Singer. Wouldn't be a horrible trade, but I think I just send in the Ghast by itself. Yeah, opponent trades. That's okay. Maybe a bull strength. Choose your weapon. That's acceptable. So now I get to ghoul plus spawn. Could save the treasure to combo with price of loyalty. I think I'd rather get the board presence going. If they kill my ghoul, I might have to just double price of loyalty and get in a bunch of damage. Well, if our opponent has more instant speed removal, could be bad for me, but again, might just be a game where we just steal the goblin a few times, enable pack tactics and kill them that way. Can still play mountain to pump my goblins with a battle cry. So on attack first, pump maybe the vampire spawn, creature I care about at least. And then we'll pump after we get the token. Alright. Opponent seems pretty dead. Alright, we're on the play. 
Hands are right, we have two ways to potentially ramp into Red Dragon by making treasure. And a Sepulchre Ghoul. I'm happy to take out. Starting to draw a few too many top-heavy cards. But now if we draw lands, we're gonna have plenty of spells to cast. Yeah, merchants, great. Yeah, I think I gotta draw a card with Axe Blade here, try and hit our land drops. Yeah, so Mountain of the Top for a giant duke. Although, I might want to fireball the merchant first so the opponent doesn't have a sacrifice outlet in play for their own price of loyalty. Although now with the second merchant, that's uh, no longer very helpful. We have five mana, but no double red. Yeah, I mean, if our opponent's sitting on price of loyalty, we're going to be in trouble. I can suicide attack my ghast just to make a treasure. That doesn't seem very good. So I'm just going to have to pass it back here. Yeah, I mean, if our opponent has answers for our dragons, it's going to be a tough battle. Hoarding Ogre. And then a Valor Singer to draw. Just gonna hang back. Hope that the Ogre doesn't get out of hand, because every treasure represents an extra card with Merchant. And there's a price incoming. Well, at least they're using it on a Valor Singer and not a Dragon. But it could imply they have more in hand. Pretty happy to double block Hoarding Ogre. Although it could get blown out by instant speed removal. Either way, we should be able to make a treasure to give us access to our double red cards next turn. Bowen's gonna sack Singer to Merchants, draw a card. Okay, I mean, a Fireball doesn't do much with two Merchants in play, so might as well play the Dragon and hope for the best. Seems better than the Giant. But if they have a Grim Bounty or another price, it's probably game over. And yeah, there's another price. I think, uh, sure, I guess we'll play it out. Having double merchant in play also kind of protects against an opposing price of loyalty, because they can just sacrifice it in response. Just 
Just kind of waiting for the opponent to take us out of our misery. I don't think this game would have been much different had we hit our double red sooner. Yeah, opponent's deck seems great. Battlecry Goblin, another premium uncommon. So... Am I forced to chum block? I guess I go to one this way. Sure, we'll go to one. Sadly, can't take myself out with my paladin. Can pump itself. So yeah, overall, still a pretty good result with our Black Red Sacrifice deck. Good quality removal at common. And then the Steal and Sacrifice combo doesn't have to be a major part of the deck. This time we only had two Price of Loyalty and a couple of Ghouls to Sacrifice stuff. So it's not always a major part of Black Red, but just a good quality removal, relatively low curve. And then if you're lucky enough to pick up some good rares, that's only going to improve the deck. But uh, yeah, overall, pretty pleased with how the Draftsmith performed in our first draft here. So make sure to use the link down below to download the untapped deck tracker, which will help out the channel. And uh, you can use the Draftsmith 10 times in your free trial just to give it a try. And then you can still use it with the premium features. And uh, yeah, let's crack some packs. Another Fire Giants. Um, yeah, this pack's not incredibly exciting. Not sure what the Draftsmith would uh, recommend here. Probably just a rare. But you can make arguments for some of the other commons and uncommons too here. The Giant Duke. Not a particularly impressive rare. Instrument of the Bards. Also kind of lackluster. Null Hunter's great. I've been impressed by the Herd Gorger, especially in the life gain decks. White Dragon's okay, so a lot of uh, decent playables here that are about the same power level. True Polymorph, a bit on the expensive side, even though it can be a powerful effect. Death Priest is great, uh, Contact Other Planes decent too. Get uh, Hobgoblin Captain for the aggressive red decks. And then Shambling Gast, also card that has gone up in value given how good it is in black-red. Then of the Bugbear, also a decent first pick. And then uh, Null Hunter would probably be next. And a Dungeon Descent, also one of the weaker rares. Alright, so not uh, the best set of packs here, but luckily they weren't our draft packs. But for now, I want to thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.